Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Red with only Blaine's Pokemon and moves was basically just the RK9 run. Let's follow that up with a real solo Pokemon challenge. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Fire Red with a team of only one Dunsparce. So Dunsparce is a really basic looking single form normal type Pokemon from Gen 2. It doesn't look that impressive, but the fun thing with this comes from its ability, Serene Grace. It doubles the chance of additional effects happening from moves, like making Headbutt twice as likely to cause flinches, or making Rock Smash always cause defense drops. It doesn't affect King's Rock till Gen 5 though, unfortunately. Our stats are actually pretty good by solo Pokemon challenge standards. Being a normal type with 70 attack actually means that return should be pretty strong, although we can't just rely on that thanks to ghost types. By level up, we learn a couple of cool moves like Glare and Screech, but overall we don't get many good attacking moves. By TM though, we learn a shockingly large amount of type variety. Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam are all on this list. Plus Earthquake? This might go really well. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm confident that we can win, but it's all about what level we'll actually be able to win at. I'm gonna guess that we can win below level 75, but we'll see. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Dunsparce. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So, right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Charmander with Dunsparce so that we can do the whole run with it. Our nature is serious, so neutral stat gains. I'm fine with that. I name him Dunsparticus after Samuel the Accuser tweeted the name suggestion at me. Because I can't think of a nickname for this thing. Like, at all. What even is this? The best Bulbapedia can tell me is that it's a snake that might be a visual pun in Japanese. Some kind of bee snake? That's the best I've got. So first up is grinding in the forest. We don't get any good moves for the rock gym early, but I'm not as worried as I usually am about it. We get Yawn at level 11 and Glare at level 14, so we might be able to have some fun with status afflictions. And as weak as Rage is, it does build power. Considering we're a Pokemon that gains a lot of health on level ups, maybe Rage will actually be useful. It seems like in Gen 3 it raises our attack by a stage every time we get hit after using Rage, so it takes a while to get going, but it could get us a win. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so the first try at the Rock Gym was at level 12, and although we were able to build up to max power with Rage, we were still only dealing 1 damage. That's really not good. Considering it has 20 power points, I knew we couldn't win, although thanks to a crit we actually did take out Geodude. Pretty much right after we ran out of power points though, so we didn't stand a chance against Onyx. Rage is just useless. Well, we don't get our next attacking move until level 21, so let's just try again in a few levels and see if we can do at least 2 damage per hit. At level 16, things go much better, with us having noticeably more health and dealing noticeably more damage. And by noticeably more, I mean 2 damage. Glare being able to paralyze them really helped though. Once we got to Onyx, I was worried that we'd lose thanks to his bind doing damage per turn, but in the end, we actually ended up winning. I cannot wait to ditch Rage, this move is terrible. Alright, we're on the road. Right now I'm just trying to get every level I can, because at level 21 we get Rollout. Not an amazing move, but we do have Defense Curl and that powers up Rollout, so we could actually get some sweeps going with it. I doubt I'll keep the move the whole game since there are much better choices later, but it should help us a lot in the early game. In Mount Moon, I obviously clear the place other than the rock types. We still suck against rock types, but that shouldn't be an issue forever. We just need to get some good TMs, like Misty's Water Pulse. Of course, we have to beat her first. Oh, speaking of, am I crazy in thinking that Dunsparce was ground type? It's not, obviously, it's for sure a normal type, but I really thought that it was ground type before I looked him up for this challenge. I don't really know why, maybe it's because he's a sandy yellow and the game calls him a land snake? I don't know. If you guys thought he was ground type though, let me know in the comments. I'm curious if anybody else thought that. Oh, and of course, on our way to Misty, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. 
So the Misty fight actually took four tries, but I wouldn't call it hard. It was mostly just because we'd get crit or confused off Water Pulse. Between Defense Curl and Rollout, we had a pretty easy time finally dealing enough damage to take out stronger Pokémon like Starmie. The rival fight right after was super easy, as we basically just swept the fight with Defense Curl and Rollout. Sometimes in the early game, all it takes is one strong move to make it through just fine. Because of the strong combo, I actually decided to skip some of the trainers north of Nugget Bridge. Normally I'd only skip a trainer up here if it's a hiker on a run where we can't really deal with rock types, but I'm starting to think that we don't actually need every last little bit of experience. At least not yet. If anything, I should probably be fighting the trainers for the money. If we're gonna want to get great moves like Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, then we're gonna need a ton of money to convert into coins once we get to Celadon. Man, think about how strong those are gonna be with the extra freeze and paralysis chance though. This could be a really fun run. On the SSN, I make sure to track down all the trainers. I know I was just saying that we probably don't need the experience, and I stand by that, but the gentlemen on the SSN actually give you a lot more money than a lot of the other trainers in the early game. We're gonna need 8,000 coins if we want Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. So 8,000 coins is 160,000 Poké Dollars, if I remember right. I'm not even close to that right now, I could afford like 2,000 coins. Considering it's not easy to get an amulet coin in this game without actually catching a ton of Pokemon, I might just need to use the Versus Seeker on some rich trainers later in the run. While I'm still on the SSN, let's do the rival fight. It ended up being super easy overall, even with Kadabra disabling Rollout at one point. Hilariously enough, against Wartortle at the end, we missed Rollout twice in a row. Two 1 in 10 chances. And in spite of that, he didn't do anything to take us down. He just ended up spamming withdraw. I guess he just knew that he couldn't deal much damage with his attacks. Let's go squash Surge. First up is Voltorb, so we defense curl to power up our rollout. Voltorb missed his first sonic boom, but then he hit us with two of them, as well as a shockwave before we could take him down. We missed another rollout, so he had an extra attack. Pikachu went down in one hit, but Raichu was last, and his double team made us miss. He used it twice right away, so we were missing quite a bit. He took us all the way down to only 21 health before we landed the second hit for a knockout. I don't like how close that was. So Rock Tunnel actually wasn't too bad for once. Not because Rage is just so good, but because we replaced it with Water Pulse. We got the TM from Misty. I doubt we'll keep this move all game or anything, but it's great for dealing with Rock types, and its 20% chance of confusion is bumped all the way up to 40% due to our abilities, so it's actually pretty good. Maybe I will keep it. While we're here in Rock Tunnel, it's time for the Chimera ad. Chimera, of course, being the wonderful clothing site that sponsors the show. It seems like the zip-up hoodies, tank tops, and t-shirts are all doing especially well right now, and I guess that makes sense considering it's summer. I can speak from experience when I say that these t-shirts are super nice in the summer. You know, considering it's summer, and I'm currently wearing one. Link at the top of the description to Chimera's website if you're interested. Oh, and that's Chimera, spelled K-H-I-M-Y-R-A. I see people say, I thought it was Chimera, and spell it like the normal way all the time, but like, the website name is right on screen. Use the code MADRYBREAD at checkout to get a discount and let them know that I sent you. Thank you everybody so much for your support, now let's go do the rocket hideout. This place is great, not only because the enemies are pretty weak, and there's lots of trainers, but there's also tons of items that we will never use, so we can just pick them up and sell them. Normally, we don't need the money, but when most of our best moves are at the game corner, we absolutely do. Oh, and we do have the TM for return now, since you can get it on your way here for free, but I don't really want to replace anything yet. Glare is still nice, the rollout and defense curl combo is still pretty strong, and we really do need water pulse for the rock types. Maybe after we beat Giovanni, I'll replace something with return, then I might have enough money to get ice beam. At that point, we probably won't need defense curl or rollout anymore, so we can really overhaul things. Ice beam with serene grace will be a 1 in 5 chance of freezing, so that's pretty cool. Not really sure if we can afford it after this though. So against Giovanni, the rock types all went down to Water Pulse easily, as you'd expect. Kangaskhan actually took a while to take down, though. Water Pulse did just about nothing, so I had to use Defense Curl and Rollout to get the win. We didn't get hurt much, but our damage output wasn't great either. I think it's finally time to get Return. 
Right after is the Grass Gem, so I go ahead and learn Return and have a real easy time as a result. We did get paralyzed by Vileplume at the end, and it delayed us a little bit, but really, they didn't stand a chance. Speaking of didn't stand a chance, the Pokemon Tower rival fight. This one is always pretty easy, the only problem we had was with Growlithe's Intimidate, making it so that we couldn't one-shot many of them. Yeah, that sounds funny, that our only problem was not being able to one-shot enough of them, but I bet you it's going to be a genuine issue by the time of the next rival fight. Time for more travel. We've got a Poison Gym coming up, and I'm kind of tempted to go do the Fire Gym early after it, since we'll still have Water Pulse. Plus, if I remember right, we can make some decent money from the trainers in the Pokemon Mansion, so maybe we can get enough for one of those awesome Game Corner TMs that we want. It's about time we replace Rollout, considering we don't even have Defense Curl anymore. No moves we can get for the Poison Gym, though. Even if we could get Earthquake, I think he's got Levitate. Let's just see if we can overpower them with Return. First was Coughing, who went down in one return, and second was Muck. Right away we took out tons of his health with Return, but he just used Minimize, then a Hyper Potion. Thanks to us missing, he got a chance to use Acid Armor, but we still took him down on the follow-up. The next Coughing was also a one-shot, so last was Weezing. Right away we got hit by Toxic to get badly poisoned, but we still just took him down in a couple of hits of Return. Not bad. Alright, you know we have to try the Fire Gym next. I don't want to assume it's going to be easy since it probably won't be considering this is Fire Red, but I think it's worth a try. Return will be useless by the end of the fight thanks to two of his Pokemon having Intimidate, but maybe Water Pulse will be enough with a little bit of Confusion luck. First up is Growlithe, so our attack is down the whole fight from Intimidate. Our Water Pulse took him down to a sliver, he nailed a Fire Blast for a decent chunk of damage, then he healed back up so we had to hit him twice to take him out. It's okay, we're faster. Ponyta goes the exact same way, hitting us with Fire Blast after surviving Water Pulse, then using a Hyper Potion. It goes down the same way too though. Rapidash is faster than us and hit a strong Fire Blast early. I thought we'd faint, but thanks to Water Pulse confusing him, he used a full heal and we got the knockout. Last was RK9, so our attack is down another stage, and Water Pulse crit for great damage and confusion. Maybe if he hit himself, we'd have won, but he just nailed Fire Blast. Oh, that was so close. That's okay, we still have lots of trainers left out east that we've never fought, and I do still need cash if I want to get all the TMs that I want, so I was gonna have to do this sooner or later anyway. Let's just get a few levels, and then we'll try the Fire Gym again. Now, this one took another 6 tries because we just kept getting burnt, or super unlucky with damage ranges, but eventually we got a great run where Rapidash missed Flame Blast, so we went into the RK9 fight with full health. Because of Blaine having full heals in Fire Red, we actually got to stop some of his attacks through confusing him with Water Pulse, as it causes him to use a full heal right after. Thanks to that, we managed to finally take down RK9 in spite of his Hyper Potions. That was surprisingly hard. Next up is Sylph Co, so I'm kind of mixed on what to do right now. On one hand, I don't want to grind too much since we're using a little bit of a stronger Pokemon than usual and we might not need it, but at the same time, Blaine went pretty badly. I decided I'd just get a level or two in here before trying the rival fight. If we lose, we can always just clear out the rest of the place and get some TMs. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was really surprised about this, but the Sylphco rival fight was really easy on the first try. We did get paralyzed by Execute due to not being able to one-shot it after an attack drop from Growlithe's Intimidate, but it didn't really change much. Blastoise was just spamming Water Gun by the end of the fight, doing just about nothing, so we easily won. I kinda thought that I'd need better moves for this fight. Oh, and of course, Giovanni right after was super easy, as he usually is. I guess we're in for a bit of a boss rush, considering there isn't any more traveling before the end of the game, aside from Victory Road. Let's go beat some gems! At the Psychic Gym, we literally just do a no-damage sweep on our whole team due to us being faster, and then being physically frail. Right after is the Ground Gym, and although my first try went awful due to Poison Point, the second try went way better. I just had to use Water Pulse on Nido King and Nido Queen to avoid actually getting poisoned, and as soon as I did that, we won easily. 
Oh, and after that fight, I finally had exactly enough money to get the TMs for Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. I can't believe it took until after the 8th gym to finally earn enough, but these moves are really gonna save us against the Elite Four. I couldn't imagine the Lorelei and Lance fights without Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. Last rival fight before the Elite Four. Pidgeot only hits wing attack, so Ice Beam did a pretty great job of taking him down, and Rhyhorn was a one-shot with Water Pulse. I'm loving this type coverage. Growlithe went down easily, but did manage to outspeed us and hit Flame Wheel thanks to agility, and our attack is of course down from Intimidate. Execute was a one-shot with Ice Beam, and Alakazam was a one-shot with Return. He was actually faster than us, but he just used Calm Mind rather than attacking, so we were fine. Blastoise was last, and he made it rain, then started using Water Gun, of all things. Well, it actually did a surprising amount of damage, and he took us all the way down to about half health before he went down. That was mostly easy, but I think our stat lead is starting to disappear as we fight fully evolved Pokémon. Okay, so after that win, I'm really mixed on if I have to grind or not. On one hand, we still beat our rival and only took about half of our health and damage, plus most of his team didn't do much. On the other hand, I know that Agatha's Gengars are especially hard to take down, and the fact that we can't just spear them with a same type attack bonus return kind of has me worried. Plus, Blastoise has Hydro Pump and Rain Dance in the last fight, if I remember right, and I'm sure that could really mess us up. I fought a few trainers on my way through Victory Road, but not all of them. If we really do have to end up grinding, then I'm thinking Lorelei might actually be the best target, not these trainers. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a good look at our team. Between good type coverage, decent stats, and a lot of health, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not totally convinced we'll win the fight with Agatha or our rival yet, but I think we could take down the rest of the Elite Four. Our speed is a little low, but we also have a Quick Claw, so that might not be too big of a deal. Make your final guess on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Dugong was a two-shot with Thunderbolt, but she started making it hail, so we're gonna have to take a little bit of damage over time. Cloyster was a one-shot with Thunderbolt. I'm just happy she didn't use Reflect, since we would take more hail damage that way. Slowbro is third, and it can be a real issue if it uses Amnesia enough, but we crit on this attempt for a one-shot. Lapras is next, and we can't deal half its health and damage. Because of that, we took a big Ice Beam before hitting Return to take her to red, she hit Surf, then ate a Citrus Berry, and we finished her off. If she didn't eat that berry, then she would have been in full restore range, and that probably would have gone worse. I might have lost. Last is Jinx, but we outsped and one shot with a critical return. The crit probably wasn't necessary, but I still appreciate it. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. It started fine with Onyx going down in one Water Pulse, but Hitmonchan took out half of our health and one Sky Uppercut before we could take him down. Right after was Hitmonlee, who was actually faster than us and took us down to only 23 health off Brick Break. Naturally, we couldn't one-shot Machamp right after, so he finished us off. To be honest, I didn't see this coming at all. I thought we'd just one-shot Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, but our return isn't actually strong enough. Starting with return takes Hitmonchan to full restore range, so I think I'll just have to come back a few levels higher. Oh, and by the way, we're leveling up by fighting a Lorelei as expected, but what I didn't expect is just how badly it would usually go. We got lucky winning the Lorelei fight on the first try, because I actually faint most attempts. Man, this run just got a lot harder, real quick. Literally dozens of run-throughs of Lorelei later, and we get this run where we still can't one-shot Hitmonchan, but at least we survived a bit better from Sky Uppercut. Hitmonlee was a one-shot, and next up was Machamp. Instead of just beating us with Cross Chop, he used Scary Face to lower our speed, then bulk up to buff himself up. Our return took him to red health, so he just healed up with our full restore as we switched to Ice Beam, just to hit a crit. Thanks to that, and us attacking first next turn, probably because of the Quick Claw, we got the knockout. Last was Onyx, who was just a one-shot. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. It wasn't even close. We can't two-shot Gengar, so that pretty much means we won't win. Check this out, even with us freezing her solid, we just lose to Confusion and Toxic. This is brutal, what level am I gonna need to be before I can win this? Okay, tons of tries later, and we got this run where we froze Gengar who defrosted on the same turn, used double team, survived with a sliver from another ice beam, confused us, then used a full restore. Oh, and we hit ourselves in Confusion. Come on, man. 
It's fine, she just used double team more, and we hit anyway for a knockout. I don't like that damage range. For Golbat, we took a weak air cutter, snapped out of confusion, then one shot it. Next is our box, so our attack is down, but I just used return twice anyway. Her sludge bomb just didn't hurt that bad. Second Gengar is next, but this one was using Sludge Bomb, so we didn't take much damage. Plus, we froze it solid, and it actually stayed frozen. Last was Haunter, who was also frozen solid, because Serene Grace is the best ability in history of ever, and I love it. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. First was Water Onyx, so our attack is down the whole fight from Intimidate, but of course it was just a one-shot with Thunderbolt due to the double-type weakness. Aerodactyl is second, so I went for Thunderbolt for great damage, as he hit Ancient Power. Second round, he healed up with a full restore, so we had to knock him back down. Then he acted first on the next round to hit Hyper Beam. I guess we only acted first on the first round due to Quick Claw. He went down soon after, and naturally, all three of his dragon types were just one-shots with Ice Beam. Every time I fight a dragon trainer, I am just thankful to have Ice Beam. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. First was Pidgeot, and literally every time I try this, I just get outsped and hit with Sand Attack. Whatever, I just stuck with it on this attempt and kept trying. At least Pidgeot hardly hurt us. Alakazam took a big chunk out of us with Psychic before we got the one-shot on him, and Executor did a surprising amount of damage with his Giga Drain before he went down to some Ice Beams. We're down to a little bit more than a third of our health as we one-shot right on with Water Pulse. RK9 is fifth, and our attack is down, so I went for Water Pulse, just to lose most of our health to Flamethrower first. Alright, he's faster, so of course we went down can't believe we're not ready for this yet. Here we are after using all of my rare candies. We still can't one-shot Pidgeot, but at least we're faster and got lucky enough to get a freeze this time. I tried this at level 85 for the record, and we just got sand attacked every time, so this was a lucky break. Alakazam is still faster than us, so we got hit by Psychic before taking him down, and we never got hit by Executor thanks to him freezing with Ice Beam. I swear, Serene Grace is a lifesaver. Rhydon is still a one-shot with Water Pulse, and then it was on to RK9. I was worried about how much Flamethrower was going to do, but we actually confused him off Water Pulse, and he hit himself, so we never took a hit. Last was Blastoise, and he just made it rain, so we got an easy two-shot with Thunderbolt, winning us the run. Well, that got brutally hard out of nowhere. Here I was, thinking we had a pretty strong Pokémon and would win at a lower level, just to end up needing to be level 86 before I stood a chance. I'm gonna have to do a run with this thing in Emerald one day, aren't I? I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon Challenge should be up next week on Saturday like usual, with the long-awaited Youngster Joey Challenge. Pokemon Gold with only one Rattata. It's time to see whose Rattata reigns supreme. As always, I'm looking at your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time! Uh, I've got nothing really big to talk about this time. I guess just that uh, me and Lucy Pyre started that Let's Play, super casual, fun, podcasty Let's Play of us playing Stardew Valley together. Hope we can do more of that soon, because that's been really fun. Uh, what else has been going on? Oh, I was looking through my email inbox, and I got a message from an indie wrestler called Cody Knight, or at least that's his ring name. So I'm just watching a little video on the side right now called Stampede 31 Highlights Continue, Landon Cruz versus Chris Turner, and Cody Knight versus Darren Drummond. I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm like halfway through the match right now, but it's pretty good. I have no idea if Cody Knight is ever going to see the outro of this thing, or if anyone's going to go look up this random episode of what looks to be an independent wrestling federation from Florida just by me mentioning the video title by name. But uh, I'm, I'm, I gotta watch the rest of this match so that I can email him back after it because it's really good so far and I'm quite enjoying it. So I thought I would just randomly bring that up in this outro uh, because that's kind of what these outros are all about. Just talking about whatever is going on. Anyway, there's, <laughs> there's a heat wave again because of course there's a heat wave again. So I can't wait to get out of this room, cool off, go do something else for a little bit. And then I gotta get editing this voiceover and playing some more Pokemon, because of course I do. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.